Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Gabriella. I make videos about fragrance, astrology, self-care, mental health, dating, life in LA. I do vlogs and basically whatever else I feel like talking about. So if that sounds like your jam, please stick around and subscribe. I would love to have you here. Today, we are gonna talk about my thoughts on some of the Banana Republic fragrances. I've never tried or I had never tried fragrances by Banana Republic and I wanted to dive in. I thought, why not? Because you know what? I'm kind of loving Banana Republic's clothes in the past couple years. They're really stepping it up or maybe I'm just growing older and so the clothes appeal to me now more because they are more mature, I don't know. But I do like Banana Republic a lot and all of the reviews of their fragrances on Fragrantica are really good. And a lot of the fragrances that I already love, when Fragrantica suggests fragrances you might like based on this one, Banana Republic ones are in there quite a bit. The names and the concepts of some of these really intrigued me. So I wanted to try and I got four fragrances and they are all from fragranceby.ca, which is the kind sponsor of today's video. I worked with them before. They are an online fragrance retailer. They have niche and luxury and designer fragrance at a fraction of the normal price. They are the first place I go when I wanna buy a new fragrance because they always have things at a much lower price, not only that, but fragrances that are not on the shelves anymore or that are really hard to find. Um, I got my first Van Cleef and Arpels fragrance from Fragrance Buy. I got my first Aqua di Parma fragrance. Many, many special fragrances from Fragrance Buy. So thanks to Fragrance Buy for sponsoring this video and helping to keep my channel running and helping to, to give me something fun to smell. So I chose these four fragrances. Let's dive right into my thoughts because I've had them for several weeks now. So the first fragrance I'm gonna talk about is for my femmes. This is Banana Republic Gardenia and Cardamom. This really interested me because there are a lot of Gardenia fragrances on the market. A gardenia is everywhere, it's incredibly popular. However, Gardenia and Cardamom, not a combination you see very often, Plus, to have cardamom in the, in the name, it must be pretty prominent, I thought. So, I will also remark that Banana Republic lids, or uh, the caps, are very, very heavy and feel a very nice quality. So, this one looks like this. It's kind of a frosted looking glass bottle. And then the name is just printed right here on a paper sticker. So, I just got a whiff of this. And this reminds me of if Gucci Bloom had a baby with Tom Ford's Soleil Blanc. So, if you don't like white florals, if you don't like gardenia, hello, you're not gonna like this because it pops the F off with the gardenia. And right off the bat, I don't smell too much cardamom, but on the skin, this becomes a really lovely warm fragrance. And I think for me, I've said it before, I, gotta, I get headaches from white floral fragrances a lot. It's not that I don't like them, my body just reacts that way. I think the cardamom adds the tiniest bit of warmth and spice that really evens out the heady floral. So to me, this is a summer fragrance, not for extreme hot weather, but this is a lovely spring, summer brunch, early cocktails, maybe wedding. Um, it's very sexy in a, in a subtle way, in a feminine way. If you feel very sexy wearing florals and smelling like a, a you know, a tree in bloom, a blossom in bloom, uh, that is gonna be gardenia and cardamom. It's nothing that is really blowing my mind. It's nothing that I haven't smelled before. Obviously, I could immediately say, okay, reminds me of Gucci Bloom, reminds me of Soleil Blanc, but um, it's not coconutty, really, but it does have a sunscreeny, a floral sunscreeny, sunny, vibe to it. Anyway, this is great for spring and summer. It's elegant and feminine. And yeah, if you want an inexpensive gardenia fragrance, try gardenia and cardamom. All right, the next one I picked up is linen vetiver. Now I love vetiver. I don't love linen. I do not like clean laundry scents. I do not like, if you've watched my channel, Light Blue by Dolce & Gabbana can, honestly, you know where I'd like to send that fragrance. But I thought with vetiver, it's not gonna be too laundry day, cheesy, cottony, so maybe I'll like it. Um, this is really citrusy. It's a pleasant, pleasant surprise. I can't think of what this smells like. It's a sweeter, more complex version of the Chantecaille vetiver, which is my favorite vetiver. I still don't have it in my collection, but that is like, I want it so bad. 
I've loved it for years, but this is more complex. It's more wearable for those who don't love vetiver, but those who love lemony fragrances, lime, citrus, this is a great one. This is really, really solid. Yeah, I suppose I can smell linen, you know, that laundry type of smell, but really to me, it's very, very sweet, like Meyer lemon and clean notes. I would call this unisex, absolutely. This is a lovely summer fragrance. Even on a really hot day, this is like a nice tall glass of lemon ice water with some herbs in there. And it, it it's really lovely. I've worn it, I've had my boyfriend wear it, and he loves it as well. So this is really great. Again, my citrus lovers, my clean, more androgynous fragrance lovers. There's nothing heavy about this though. There's nothing obnoxious or loud. It is just sunny, summery, cheerful, and it just, yeah, it's really like sweet Meyer lemon. It's almost like limoncello is what it reminds me of. So I really like this one. This is a pleasant surprise. I have no qualms with this. That is Linen Vetiver. All right, the next one I picked up is 78 Vintage Green. I didn't even really look at these notes. I just was in intrigued by that name, Vintage Green, because it really doesn't describe anything except maybe if the fragrance is kind of green. So this one I definitely want to give to my boyfriend. He liked this one. I do like this as a fragrance. Do I feel that it's me? No. Do I feel like people would smell that and be like, I could smell that on Gobby? No. But this reminds me, so immediately I smell an herbaceous note. It's mint. I don't think there's any juniper in here, but it smells a little bit junipery. It's a little bit like gin. This reminds me of a mojito or a gin and tonic or one of those very um, like herbal but, but light cocktails. Then this one also to me, I smell a ton of citrus, lemon, lime, maybe grapefruit. So this is sour. This might also have vetiver in it. This is sour and herbaceous. It really does remind me of like a lemon, lemon mint gin and tonic. So for men, this might be a little feminine because it is leaning on a sweeter side, not in a gourmand way, it doesn't smell like sugar, doesn't smell like candy, anything like that, but it's not dark and deep and woody. But I think it smells very expensive, it smells very elegant and very, very clean. I can say that on a man, this smells very clean. You smell really well put together. This is another great summer one that's not gonna give you a headache. Great for weddings, for brunch. Um, this one is really, really solid. Which do I like better? I can't really compare. Actually, now this reminds me of tequila. This is like a margarita, weirdly enough. This is like a margarita, and this is like a lemon mint gin and tonic. So if you want more cutting, bright, citrusy, sour, go with linen vetiver. This is sour too though, man. If you like herbs, oh guys, I really don't know. But I think overall, I like 78 Vintage Green better. I think in the base, there might be a little musk or something woody in here because this will go into the next one. But it smells a little bit like it could be a, like a flanker or like an Abercrombie type of fragrance deep down in there. Maybe even an Abercrombie for women or like a Hollister for women. Not in a cheap way. I know people scoff at some of those fragrances. I like them, okay, I like them. Not obviously as much as they spray around the store, but I like them. But yeah, this is giving me a little bit nostalgia as well. I really, really like this actually. Do I wanna give this to my boyfriend? Maybe he can just wear it when he comes over. The last one I wanna talk about is Metal Rain. And this I had to get because I love the smell of rain. And not that I love the smell of metal, but I'm always interested when perfumes have metallic notes. I'm like, ugh, but I'm curious. This is the older, employed, has a 401k, sexy brother of Abercrombie Fierce or Abercrombie Fragrances. This is so sexy on purpose. This is like, yeah, I'm trying to smell sexy. Do I smell this and think metal? No. Do I smell this and think rain? No. Can I smell those now that I, I know the name? Sure. Especially metal. It's like warm, but at the same time, there's a cold overcast. There's an icy overcast over this fragrance. On a man, 
this is hot. And if you like the smell of Abercrombie, but you don't want to get yourself or your partner Abercrombie fragrance, cause it's like embarrassing to have that out or whatever, this, this is in the same vein. I smell a sweet lemon in here as well, I think. Some kind of citrus on the top, maybe just bergamot, but man, this is good. This is heavy, not too heavy, not like super oody, but it's, ooh, it is just Abercrombie retro sexy, grown up, but it's like late 20s finance guy, maybe a little douchey, sexy, drives a crazy nice car, but you hate to love him, you love to hate him. I don't know. Oh man, I smell good. Yeah, there's gotta be citrus in there on the top. Anyway, Metal Rain is definitely my favorite out of these four. I think it's the most unique and it gets me the most visceral response. So that's my review of the Banana Republic fragrances that I got. Let me know if you've tried any and shout out to Fragrance Buy for sponsoring this video. And I will see you in my next one. Love you guys so much. Bye guys.